All right, first you heard him, now you see Sean Vazan on the end of the table. We bring in our Saints analyst and, of course, Saints Hall of Famer, Deuce McAllister. If you're playing GM, what position do you address first in the draft of the Saints? Well, right now, you know, you have to be able to look at what they did as far as free agency. I think that's probably the key and critical thing. But if it's me looking at it right now, how the board sits. Now, we can't predict, hey, if they're moving up or this player is falling. We're just talking about as it sits today, it's probably going to be defensive line. I think that, you know, you've lost a lot of guys, whether you're talking about interior or on the outside. You've got to be able to replenish that uh, room. And I think also looking at it, Cam Jordan has been phenomenal. Yeah for you. But at the end of the day, you know, I don't see Cam playing at, at that level for another four or five years. So you better start putting some guys in there that you can depend on and kind of help that room a little bit. This is a very smart man. I was thinking the exact same thing. This is a very smart man right here. This is a defensive tackle, defensive end uh, with where they sit at 29, what could be available and that back in those, you know, higher 20s, depending on how the way the board falls, who knows they move up. But but in this situation at 29, I think it would be defensive tackle or also defensive Defensive ends, let's just call it defensive line because as much as we want Cam Jordan to play forever, I don't think that's the case. So they got to invest in that in position as well, and there's a certain type they go for at that position. So I think defensive line or maybe front seven, defensive line plus linebacker, we'll see. But overall, I think defensive line at this point. Do you both think it's a telltale of just how desperate they are to get someone at that position being defensive end when Cam Jordan is still your best option even at his age and getting towards the end of his career? No, I don't think it's a telltale. I mean, but you just look at across the board what they've done as far as free agency. I mean, they've been able to bring some guys in, but they know that they have to add at that position. And I think, you know, overall, um, you can still add some guys after the draft. And there's some, some, some pretty good guys that can come in and maybe fill a role, maybe a third down guy or even, hey, look, I just want to get a guy that can be good against the run first down wise. Those are things that they can continually continually do but I think when you look at it when you're talking about investing four or five year commitment it, it, it's via the draft yeah and look they've they Cam has given them stability on one side and longevity on one side it's kind of bailed them out a little bit because they've they've kind of rotated on that opposite end for quite some time since he's been there um, I think about guys that not draft wise but guys like Alex Okafor they brought in years ago they brought in obviously Marcus Davenport they brought in uh, now Peyton Turner Carl Granderson's a guy in the mix so yeah I do think it's interesting that Cam Jordan is still their top dog at defensive end but I think it also goes to show less about the Saints inability to draft the other side is probably more about Cam's own greatness in terms of his longevity, consistency, and productivity. And here, here's one more thing, one, when you look at it overall. Don't be surprised if maybe day two or day three a veteran that's in the NFL comes available because a team does pick, you know, a, a defensive end and now maybe a veteran that's maybe a little bit more pricey. He becomes available, so that may be an avenue as well that they can be able to add some bodies into that room as well. I was going to ask the question about, you know, salary cap and everything where the Saints stand right now. They have, it feels like they have the money, the finances to go after a guy that's a veteran free agent that, that comes available as the team picks someone in that position they shouldn't they're not gonna be shying away from no, any player now no I don't I don't think so I think that they can be creative they've always been creative yeah. when you talk about salary cap and the moves that they have to make or they can make but right now you have enough cap and you know it always becomes well what about signing the draft picks they can make it work yeah. I mean there's there's some avenues to make it work and to be creative so those are some things that they can do but I mean they have the cap space if it's via trade they can make that happen yeah they have they have I, matter of fact, when I looked at the number recently, I was I almost went back. Whoa, they do have that much cap space yeah. left. That's going to be fine. Plus, post draft into that, I don't know what kind of wave that would be. The May, the June wave of uh, whatever veterans are still out there, you could certainly make a, a decent offer to a player. And who knows if something will be available draft wise, uh, trade wise. But also, you know, you wait till after the draft because of the compensatory the pick situation. You, you don't want to sign before the draft because now the compensatory pick yeah. formula gets thrown off. So you wait till after the draft, and that could certainly help as well. Good point. What, posi what position would surprise you if they pick that spot first with the number one pick? Receiver. 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 I think receiver and then even running back, I would be surprised uh, at those two positions. You know, offensive line, I would not be surprised one bit. Uh, probably linebacker, you know, but it depends on what type of linebacker. If he's on the ball linebacker, like a guy that rushes, uh, I, I think at 29, I wouldn't be surprised. But if he's an off the ball guy, probably a little bit surprised there. I don't see them going cornerback uh, at 29. I think they seem to be fairly set with numbers at that position. You can always add to that room because in today's NFL, um, we know how it is. But I just don't see it at 29. I would be surprised if they went with cornerback. Let's talk about offense for a second. The importance of getting an offensive playmaker with that first pick. What do you think? 
Oh, or, or in this draft in well, general? I, I love playmakers, but I don't think that you needed uh, the first pick. I think that they have to solidify the middle of that, that, that team. And, and when you talk about defensive line, you talk about linebacker, there's a need, even safety to a standpoint, but I don't think that you do it at 29. I think, you know, when you look at it from a center standpoint, you're fine there. Offensive guard, you may have a little question mark there. You know, you know where you are with quarterback, being able to have something behind Alvin. You were able to add that free agency. So at this point, where can we get more most bang for our buck? And I think that's where you, you really look at it. But it's solidifying the middle of the field is what they have to do. Now, you can add players, just like Sean said, at all of those positions with some other picks. But, you know, um, overall, I think that they have to be able to beef it up inside. Is the concern, though, Sean, you may not have Alvin this year because of the suspension. It may be coming from the NFL. You don't know the status of Michael Thomas' situation. He hasn't played a healthy season in God knows how long. So maybe there's an even more need to find yourself a playmaker in the draft? Well, it depends It depends on how high they had the kid from Texas raked on their board. Because if he was somehow a slip at 29, maybe they would consider it. But I, even, I think that would be a long shot at 29. The scenario is this. If one of those first-round graded running backs, if they had one, slips into round two, like the kid from Alabama, Jameer Gibbs, I think that's the, only, that, that's the earliest you would maybe consider it at 40. But I think it's more likely you would see it in the third round or fourth round because this is a pretty deep class of running backs. Not to mention, you mentioned Alvin Kamara. He was picked in the third round. You can find playmakers at that position in the third round as well. And here's the other thing, one, when you look at it overall, I'm not getting the every down back. I don't need an every yeah. down back, you know, because you have some other pieces. I need a guy that can come in and play a role. Even with Alvin being suspended, you're going to still have a hybrid type of situation, not a guy that you're going to turn around and just give it 20 times to. So if I can find a playmaker, really like Sean said, third, fourth round, then that's probably where you're going to make a move for a running back. Of course, the biggest move this team made during the offseason signing Derek Carr. They've got their quarterback for at least the next two years, maybe a little bit longer than that. Does it affect how they approach this draft, the signing of Carr? Yes and no. Um, because you know, it's our first yes and no. There it is. There we go. He's, He's back. back. Yes, and no. <laughs> yes and no. I mean, because you, you you see him be able to bring in Hooker. You know that they did the grade and the homework on those top other quarterbacks. But at the end of the day, you know, would you take him at 29? Would you take him at 40? You know, those are all questions that they have to ask themselves. But I think that. If this organization is trying to win this year, you can't make that move. And that's really, you know, it, it, it's understanding and knowing where you are with what you have in the building and where you try to get to within the next two years or three years. And so uh, from a financial standpoint, do you make that type of commitment to Derek Carr and then you bring in a first-round quarterback? That would be interesting. Well, look. What it is is bringing in Derek Carr, if they had not made that move right now, let's just say they're running back with Andy Dalton or Jameis Winston, I think there'd be a little more anxiety in that building right now because I think then they would feel a little more urgency to get a guy because they know they needed to upgrade at that yeah. position. So I think that's where the Derek Carr situation kind of calms them down a little bit. But in saying that, I still think it's good business to constantly invest in that position, maybe not round one. In fact, I, I, I think they should stay away from it round one. Round two, eh, but round three and beyond, maybe if he's high enough graded and, and becomes available and there's a, uh, you know, a selection to make, then by all means go do it. Because I still think in today's NFL, there's this niche quarterback that is going to de develop into a high-end backup that can come in and the Saints have seen it over the last couple of years, get a six to eight game stretch and keep you afloat. I think that's a type of quarterback they could possibly develop uh, if they may be able to grab one in the third or fourth or fifth round. Let me ask you real quickly. Hendon Hooker obviously came here and visited with the Saints. If he didn't have that injury at Tennessee, are we talking about him being a top one, two, or three pick quarterback? Probably. Top ten. Yeah, top ten. probably. Top yeah. ten for okay. sure. Ahead of Richardson, you think? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. top ten. There seems to be more out there on, on Hooker than Richardson. Are you, are you sold on Richardson, by the way? I am, but he's, he's got to develop. Yeah. I mean, he's a, he's a heck of an athlete. He's a heck of a quarterback. But I would take Hooker first okay. if he wasn't injured. We'll talk about two players for the Saints, Cam Jordan, DeMario Davis, guys that are still productive but really on the back end of their career. When you look at those two positions, which one do you think is a more need to start finding the future maybe in this draft? It's Cam Jordan. Yeah. yeah, it's Cam Jordan. I mean, DeMario, not to take anything away from him, I mean, because he's been phenomenal, and I think that you can find that linebacker. But, you know, right now you have to have that, that other defensive end, and it's like Sean talked about. It's been a rotating door, you know, opposite of Cam Jordan. And so if Cam steps away, you're, 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 you're hurting. You are hurting. You know, with DeMario, you're going to lose some leadership. You're going to lose some playmaking ability. But I think that you can hide a little bit more so than you can do from, from losing a Cam Jordan. It's a tough question because both those guys have been so good, but they've been so durable. Knock on wood here. They've been so – they've always been Played available. And yeah. that, that's what you would miss uh, more than anything else with both those players. But I guess 
In today's NFL, I will probably lean more towards the defensive end position over the linebacker position in terms of which we need more. But make no mistake about it. I mean, when they had to finally replace Demario Davis, that's not going to be easy shoes to fill as well. Saints are on the clock right now, and you are – well, they're almost on the clock. Let's go that way. And you have the opportunity to move up in this draft in the first round. Do you move up? Send it. Make the call. Okay. Go get your guy. Yeah. Go get him. If there's a guy that you have in your top 15 and then not picking that top 15 and starts to slide outside of top 15 into 17, 18, 19, 20, yes, I see the Saints pick up the phone, making the call, and going up and getting that play. Because it's all about being aggressive and winning what now. They do. All right, Sean, thank you. Deuce McAllister, Saints Hall of Famer. Nice to have him back in the building.